Okay, hello everyone. Hi, thank you for joining the webinar this afternoon. Um, my name's Andrew. Uh, I'm one of the senior education consultants here at Crick Software. And this afternoon, I'm joined by Sean. Hi everyone, thanks for joining us. Um, as Andrew said, my name's Sean and I'm a customer experience consultant here at Crick Software. But my background is actually in primary education. I taught across early years and year one for 10 years before I joined Crick earlier this year. Brilliant. Oh, thanks, Sean. So um, just so everyone's aware, um, this session will last for approximately 30 minutes. And we're going to be covering quite a lot in today's session, uh, looking at how we can support uh, writing and reading um, in early years. Now, uh, just so you're all aware, the session is being recorded. Um, so keep an eye out in your emails a couple of days um, after this session and you can pass a recording to colleagues that weren't able to attend. And if you do have any questions throughout the session, uh, our colleagues, uh, Sophie and Joe, uh, they're in the Q&A box. So any questions, just type a question in and they'll be able to answer, hopefully. So, uh, so yeah, we're uh, going to go through quite a lot in the session, uh, but hopefully uh, me and Sean have planned it in a way that will take you through kind of an early years classroom and how we can use Clicker. So um, just to start off with then, um, Sean, I'm going to come over to you. But in your experience um, of being an early years teacher, um, how would you start the writing process? So in my experience of teaching early years, there's actually a lot that goes into a piece of writing ahead of that writing process itself. So you're thinking about the text you're going to use. You're thinking about what enhancements you want in your classroom environment, independent learning opportunities and what you want that final writing outcome to be. Um, <coughs> sorry. And you're also thinking about how you want to ensure all your students are engaging in a valuable learning activity. So in terms of a starting point, I know often with my EYFS class, I'd start with the vocabulary. So I'd choose my focus text, then I'd pick out some key vocab, vocab ahead of time that I really wanted to focus on during that story or the topic. And then we do lots and lots of work on exploring it, rehearsing it and defining all that vocab to ensure the children really understood it. And we do lots of work on using those words and phrases in context, in full sentences, just really getting to grips with those words so eventually children could use them independently in their writing. Yeah, and, and following uh, following that, uh, looking at how that kind of fits into Clicker, um, we, we've picked out a couple of activities, but we're going to keep along the theme of Jack and the Beanstalk for the session today. And uh, the first activity I wanted to show was uh, something that we call a matching set. Now, all of these activities that I'll be showing today, uh, they are found in an area that we call Learning Grids, uh, where we've got over 3,000 pre-made resources. And I was going to mention this at the start, but just so everyone's aware, you can use Clicker on Windows, Mac, iPad and Chromebook. Of course, for the session today, we're going to be uh, looking at the laptop version. But going back to that matching set and going back to what Sean said about developing that vocabulary, um, you know, getting used to words that we might be coming across, uh, it might be that we uh, use one of our matching sets. So this one here, we've got um, almost like a contents page in a way. So we can uh, click on any of the words. Castle. So castle. So we can hear that back uh, for all of our learners. And we, we could use this as a whole class activity as well. So everyone's on the carpet. We're going through this all together. And then it turns learning into a little bit of a game after this, because once we've gone through these keywords, if we click on the arrow, we've then got a number of choices to choose from. So we've got the hen, but if we get the answer wrong. Try again. Try again. Well done. Well done. And of course, we can go through this activity. So it's a really engaging uh, resource that we can use with the whole class. We could use it one to one support and we can also use it in group work as well. Now, another activity we could use for developing that vocabulary and the, and the key words that we're coming across in that story is um, uh, another activity that we call a talk set. Uh, now, this one here, I suppose this could be used after the matching set where once we've gone through the vocab, we might just want to rehearse those words a little bit because we'd be coming across them uh, throughout that story. So going to, back to that word of castle or hen or you know, the golden harp, what we could do is we would click castle on one of the words and we can go through like the contents page. And then what we do is we'd go back to the first picture and this one here being the golden hen, we would click on the microphone at the bottom, hit the record button. And at that point, we would just record ourselves as that learner saying golden hen or just hen so golden hen click stop 
click done. And then if we click on the icon, it will play that recording back. So it's a great way to just develop that early vocabulary, especially brand new words that we've come across in that story. And of course, with this talk set, we can go through all of the keywords uh, and then we can go back to that original page as well once we're finished as well. Now, all of these activities, we can save them onto the school network as well. So you can have a central folder with all of your activities so you can load them up really easily as well. Uh, but yeah, just starting off, just wanted to... Uh, um, uh, go back to what Sean said and then show some activities that are related to that uh, vocabulary development. Now, following on from this, uh, Sean, just coming back to you. So once we've developed uh, some of those keywords, um, how would we or how would you typically introduce the text to the class? What, what did you kind of do within the lesson? So I personally always loved using a book as a hook in my EYFS classroom. I've just always found that young learners love books and it's a really great way to hear all of that key vocab in context and have that nice visual reinforcement as well. So whether I was sharing story as a part of a lesson, maybe during a group read, continuous provision or just reading for pleasure, books were always a really, really important part of my day in early years. But I know from experience that using a physical book is lovely, but you end up with that chorus of children saying, I can't see, and so-and-so is up on their knees, and they all just gradually squidging closer and closer to you until they're essentially sitting on your lap. Um, so clicker books are actually a really lovely alternative for that. Yeah, and um, and then uh, looking at some of our clicker books, so same again, the, these uh, two activities that I'll show now, uh, both of these can be found on Learning Grids. Uh, but the first one I'm going to load up is the um, uh, uh, this one here called Jack and the Beanstalk Reader Book. Now, this one that we'll start off with, this book contains lots of information, so multiple sentences and multiple paragraphs. Now, uh, what's really nice about this is, of course, we could have it on the interactive whiteboard, so sharing it to the whole class. So we don't come across that issue that Sha mentioned with everyone kind of getting closer and closer until they're sitting um, on your knee. Uh, and what we can do with these books in particular, the, the Reader Book, what we can do is if we click on this speaker icon, uh, just in the bottom left, uh, Clicker will read that page of information back to us out loud. Once upon a time, there was a boy called Jack. There we go. So what we can do now, we can share the audio, we can share the book with everyone. Everyone can be really engaged. They're not having to worry about um, you know, seeing the book clearly. We can have it on the interactive whiteboard altogether and go through it as a whole class. So really looking at that inclusive classroom support there so everyone can get involved. Now, I understand that this book might be overwhelming for some of our learners because it's too many words or it's too many paragraphs and sentences. So a nice alternative that we've got in Learning Grids that I've uh, downloaded is uh, it's another Jack and the Beanstalk book. But this one, rather than called Read a Book, this one is called a Read It Yourself Story. So this one here. So let's just say we might have gone through the other book as a whole class. We might have some of those learners that you know go back to the table or they go back to the group and they still need that book just to refer back to. So in that case, we might want to give them this story instead. Now, this one takes all of the great visual support that we had in the other story, but condenses that text down just into a single sentence. So it's not as overwhelming and they still get all of that great information. Uh, but um, uh, kind of the information is presented in a way that's suitable for their learning at the moment. So as you can see there, we can go through this. Um, and we can go through the whole story just and, and you know, be included uh, uh, like a you know, as a part of the class. Now, what's really nice with these books and, and all of the activities in Learning Grids is we can print them off on paper as well. So to print any of these activities off, what we would do is we would go click a set at the top. We then click print. And as you can see, we can print this off as a physical book. So this could be in our book corner, for example. We can staple it in the corner so we can have that physical book as well if we want to, uh, alongside having it on the interactive whiteboard. And then we could even have it on an iPad screen as well, for example. So just looking at our books, especially the ones, uh, the reader book, you know, looking at really, you know, really engaging our learners now, especially for some of those uh, reluctant readers and writers, having it read back to the whole class can be really, really beneficial, especially for developing that, that independence uh, with, with, with their own learning as well so that, that was two of the books that might follow that early vocabulary development with the matching set and the talk set um but following on from this uh from the reading book so we've read the text as a, as a whole class now um shan so um what's important uh, so once we've read the story what what's important for learners to focus on like once we've reviewed the information or, or we've read that story together 
Yeah, so for me, repetition and reinforcement were so valuable in EYFS. You know, you can't assume that children are going to retain something that you taught them on Monday in Wednesday's lesson or Friday's lesson. So providing my learners with regular opportunities to rehearse what they've been learning about and allowing them to do that independently and orally is so key. So many students I've taught in the past are so knowledgeable and so confident verbally, but issues like fine motor skills, for example, really limit them when it comes to that actual pen to paper motion. So they then end up feeling stressed or really frustrated that they're not able to get their point across in the way that they'd like to. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's so many barriers that that, that pupils are faced with at the moment. Um, So, you know, looking at that repetition, um, once we've developed our early vocabulary, we then introduce the book. What we might then follow on from uh, from this book is um, another talk set. So this is a different type of talk set to the one we looked at previously, which was the keywords. Uh, and this one here, if I open up this one, this is like a, a series of events. Uh, so this one um, is uh, just the whole story uh, of Jack and the Beanstalk. But the aim of this one is to just retell the story. So let's let, let's ensure that the learners that we're supporting, uh, they've retained all that information uh, before we move on to that writing stage. So in this one here, we can click on well any of the pictures. You know, that's a great freedom of clicker. We don't have to stick to that order. If a pupil wants to go backwards, that's absolutely fine. Or if they want to just pick a, uh, a scene uh, in the middle of the story, they can do that as well. But starting at the beginning, we can click on the picture here. And just like we did with the other activity, uh, we would just record a minute of audio just below this picture, like an MP3 recording, talking about what's happening in the scene. It could be describing the characters, what happens next or what happened before. So it's a very open-ended activity that is purely based on what can our learner uh, develop verbally, like Sean said, because they might have lots of issues with you know, handwriting, getting their ideas down on paper. So we can take a step back and let's just see what they can develop verbally uh, before they start that writing process. Uh, and just so you're aware, everyone, I just saw this question pop up, but just thought it might be worth everyone knowing all of these activities that I'm showing today from Learning Grids, you can edit them as well. So that book, we can edit and change the vocabulary. So we can change enormous to big uh, and also these talk sets as well. We can actually increase the number of recordings that we can see at the bottom here up to six recordings per picture. So essentially up to six minutes of audio we can record um, alongside one singular picture. So all of these we can edit. Uh, yeah, so you're not just up with what we've got off learning grids. But looking at this talk set as well, this could be great for one-to-one intervention. We could use this as a whole class as well and getting different learners to approach the interactive whiteboard and developing their own ideas. So really getting the whole class involved so no one's left out. Um, and just like you said, Chan, you know, they're not getting, you know, they're not getting stressed and frustrated because they're sharing ideas. Now it's not just all about them. They can share their ideas with the peers. So yeah, I do really like those talk sets for kind of just rehearsing that vocabulary and uh, just retelling the story, really. Um, but what once we've done this, so once we've uh, you know read the book and we've retold the story, um. At what point in learning, um, well, I suppose at this point in learning, we, we might be getting closer uh, to producing a piece of work. But, Sean, in your experiences, before we start that writing process, what was something that you did kind of before that to ensure they had all the support that they needed? So once we were really familiar with the story and all that vocab we've been talking about, I'd start thinking about that end piece of writing and how we could gather some ideas and create a plan to support pupils with that final outcome and ultimately being a bit more independent. So I was always a big fan of a whole class discussion, like you said, with the interactive whiteboard where the children are sharing ideas, I'm collating them or we've got post-it notes or a mind map just creating something really, really visual that we can refer back to. And as I said, just increasing that independence. So modeling is key in EYFS. And what's great about all these things that Andrew's showing you is that, as he said, you can complete them as a class, but then you could have another example with a different prompt that's more independent. So whether that's your adult led focus task or um, in continuous provision in your writing area, there's so many different ways that you could use them. Yeah, and, and, and I think, you know, looking at how we can print all these out and all looking at that continuous provision, that's really important. But going back to what you mentioned about, you know, developing almost like a plan together on the interactive whiteboard, um, the activity that we're going to look at next. So, of course, you know, going through the stages, we've developed our vocabulary, we've read the story, we've re- rehearsed the story, we've retold it. 
know, getting closer to that writing uh, process, uh, we might then want to introduce uh, a clicker board, which is uh, our mind mapping tool that we've got. So this one here, it's uh, just describing the characters. So we've just got two characters here. Um, uh, and of course, we can add more if we want to. But this is uh, Jack Wars. We've got a really nice uh, visual prompt there. And then we in here, we could type in Jack Wars. Um, a boy, for example, something really simple. But of course, we could go around uh, and just, you know, ask the different learners in the lesson, um, you know, some adjectives about the characters. So, for example, it could be small. And, you know, if we wanted to, rather than Jack was, we could just change it to Jack. So Jack was, or, or just Jack, a boy, small. Um, so we could just go around describing the character. And of course, we can do that the same with the giant. So we could just change it here to giant. There we go. And then around the outside, we've got big. We've got scary, so really easy uh, to use the clicker boards as well, especially in, in, in a lesson when you've got so much to do. You're going through, you know, teaching the vocabulary, you're having to uh, you know, manage lots of, of different abilities, having something that's really easy to use. It's not going to, you, know, you don't have to insert the boxes. You don't have to reformat everything. You just double click and type. It can just be really beneficial just for saving that time. So, all, of course, all together, we can plan this. Um, as well, uh, we can print this one out on paper, just like we looked at with the books. So, for example, we can go click a set, click print. And then this now, what we could do is we could print this off. Uh, and if we did have learners focused on handwriting, they could even fill in the blanks around the outside. If it was in that continuous provision, you know, in the corner of the room and we sent a group over. So, um, yeah, we could do it as a whole class. We could leave it all blank. As a teacher, we could fill in parts of it. Um, and then obviously everyone could handwrite in these boxes and then stick it in their book or put it in their folder. So so yeah, we've uh, so we've got the uh, clicker boards here, uh, which is really nice. We've got the, uh, the the planning stage. So getting really close to that independent writing now. Um, but of course, we um, uh, uh, once we've done the planning all together, of course, the expectation would be that now we can start to develop some of our you know, basic sentences about the story. So um, Shan, um, how would you approach, or following the planning stage, how would you approach the final piece of writing um, kind of after using the planning board altogether? Yeah, so once we'd gathered those key ideas and come up with our plan, we'd come to that writing process. And that final piece of writing would always vary massively depending on the needs of the student. So there's always such a big range of abilities in an early years class. So from the children who are still struggling with their pen grip and to hear those initial sounds, right up to the children who've confidently grasped the concept of finger spaces and full stops and they're writing it, their sentences completely independently. Yeah. Um, so, you know, so looking at how we can then transition from all of this, you know, planning that we've done, uh, developing that vocabulary. Uh, what I'm going to move on to now, um, probably for a good kind of five or 10 minutes, actually, is uh, we're going to have a look at um, how we can start that writing process. Um, so within Clicker, we have three different, we call them the, the writing grids. That, that's the name that we call them within Clicker. Um, and we're going to have a look at each one of, of the activities uh, that we've got. And the first one I'm going to start with is, uh, where have I put this one? Uh, I'm going to start with, where's my sentence set? Oh, there is. Uh, so I'm going to open up my sentence set. Uh, so this one is, is one that we might want to start with for some of our learners. Some of those learners that are still, you know, they've got some barriers to writing. You know, they need some support with that sentence structure and some of the key vocab. And this is where a sentence set might be really beneficial for, for them at the moment. So as you can see, it opens up at the bottom of the page. We try to make it really clear for all of our learners. And of course, what we can do is we can insert the picture just by clicking on it. So put the picture in. And of course, with this one here, we would put that sentence back together, hopefully, fingers crossed, in the correct order. So um, there was a boy called Jack. Now, what's really important here is if our learners, if they're struggling to read any of these words, for example, boy, what we can do within Clicker is we can right click on any of these words and it will read it back to us out loud. Boy was Jack called. I think that's really important, like from a, from a proofreading perspective, you know, as we're going through that learning, uh, we can ensure that we're giving all of the support for that learner um, within that lesson. And, you know, uh, th this isn't going to complete the work for them. We've still got to understand the structure of that sentence. But let's just say they're, you know, they're still a little bit confused after listening to all of those individual words. Uh, within Clicker, uh, and well, this this activity in particular, we've got a, a level of support uh, called a pop-up. Now, the pop-up will uh, bring the full sentence up on the screen that we can uh, read and we can listen to it back. 
and then we can close it down and then put that sentence back together. So if I just show you, uh, show everyone how we'd use that, we would click on the I icon just on the left hand side here. The full sentence will appear, and of course, we can click on this. There was a boy called Jack. So there was a boy called Jack. Now, what's really important at this stage is with this with this uh, support here. We can listen to this, but we've got to retain that information before we click on any of the words. So we can't just copy it. We've got to retain it, keep listening to it until we understand that sentence. And then once we're confident, we close it down and then we put that sentence back together. Uh, and, and this pop up, we can use as many times as we want within the lesson as well. We could use it 15 times if we wanted to, because the emphasis is on the learner for understanding that sentence. And what's really nice now is once we've put that sentence back together, if we put a full stop in, there was a boy called Jack. Uh, the sentence will, re will be read back to us. And, and going to that proofreading, uh, I think that's really important because if we do um, uh, put that sentence back together incorrectly, it's important that the pupil knows that it's, it's not correct and then they can make the appropriate changes uh, so they can delete the words and then have another attempt. And then with this sentence set here, once we've done that first sentence, we would just click on the arrow. And then, of course, we can go to the next sentence here and then we can click on the pop up. An old man gave Jack some magic beans. We can listen to that as well. An old man gave Jack some magic beans. So close it down. And then an old man uh, gave Jack some magic beans. Put the full stop in, read it back. An old man gave Jack some magic beans. And then as we go through, we can just click on that sentence there and, and click on the arrow just to go through the different sentences. So uh, we've got, so so that's kind of the, the, the first uh, writing grid that we've got that we can introduce for some of our learners that are still developing that independence with writing. But for some of our learners, this might be a little bit too easy for them, uh, or they might be at a stage now where they're getting a little bit more independent over their writing. So rather than a sentence set, we might want to introduce something that we call a connect set. So this one here, so still focused on Jack and uh, the Beanstalk. But this one here, as you can see, slightly different activity where we've got the pictures taking us through the story. So, uh, and I think what's really nice, especially on learning grids, is if you're keeping along the same theme, the pictures are all the same as well. So the pictures are the same from the book, from the, the matching set, the talk set, the writing grid. So the pictures are consistent because I think that's really important as well that you're offering consistent support. But then, as you can see, if we go on to sentence one, a more open-ended type of activity now. So great for developing that independence. Uh, you know, it's still you know, taking them through the structure of a sentence. So pick one option in each column. Uh, but yeah, just offering a little bit more independence now with writing. And going through, we've got sentence two, three, four, five. We can add that picture in as well. And of course, just like we did with the sentence set, if we right click. Jack was climbed and then you know the beanstalk. the beanstalk so we still have that that support uh by right clicking on any of the grid so uh going from a sentence set we might want to introduce um a connect set um, and then finally what we might want to introduce for some of our learners you know we might print these off but for some of our learners we might want to give them a word bank now we've got a couple of options here that i downloaded off learning grids uh, one of those is it's called a, a it's called a picture word bank so opening this one up here we won't get the full sentence, but what we can do is we can uh, just have some of the keywords that we've been focused on in the different activities, and we can just have them at the bottom of the screen. So, of course, as we're uh, you know developing our sentences, so uh, the boy was called, and then Jack. Jack, and then we can insert some of those words. Of course, developing these independent sentences, you know, they might have that one-to-one -one support as well. But this just gives them some of the key vocabulary at the bottom of the screen that they can focus on and insert into that document. Um, another type of activity that we might want, but uh, along the same theme of, of the word banks, it's this one here. This is just kind of one of our um, multiple tabbed word banks uh, going through some of the characters, the nouns, the verbs, the adjectives and some story language. Now, like I mentioned before, you can completely edit all of these activities. So, of course, if you wanted to reduce the complexity of some of these, that is absolutely fine. Um, we can delete loads of these words if we want to. So we, we just have three options to choose from, for example. And uh, just like I showed before with the clicker boards and the books, uh, what's really nice as well, especially with, um, I really like uh, doing this with the the, the connect set here uh, or, e or even the sentence set, is if we go back into clicker set and click print, this could really easily become a cut out and stick activity. Um, so you're know, thinking of how we can use clicker outside the box. I know uh, I used to be a year four teacher and 
Um, uh, a lot of the time, of course, looking at handwriting, it's really important, but also reducing screen time. Uh, you don't want your know, learners to be constantly looking at a screen in every single lesson. So being able to print the resources off, have it as a paper resource, one between two, um, you know, focusing on handwriting uh, can be really beneficial as well. So printing these off, having it as a cut and stick out activity, or even just copying the words and practicing on their handwriting, for example. So as you can see there, all of these we can print off on paper, even this word bank here. So this could even be printed off and it could be a part of our uh, working wall or a or, or display board in the lesson as well. So lots of different ways that we can utilize uh, the writing grids, of course, you're developing writing uh, specifically on the screen or being able to print them off and use it as a paper resource one between two. Now, uh, once, once we've gone through this or once, you know, looking at that final stage of writing, producing this piece of work, um, uh, um, just going back to you, Sean, so how important, um, uh, I suppose, well, I'm trying to think of how to show this actually. What so I'm trying I'm just gonna go back a second actually, just to show you all what we're gonna go into. So what well, once we've gone through this, um uh, of course we've done this work all together. So we know the support that we've used. So we've used a sentence set, we've used a connect set, we've used the word bank for some of the words like Jack. Now, um what we can do at the top of the page here is um if we click on analytics. What Clicker will do is it will analyze that entire document and tell us where those words have come from. Now, of course, if we produce more work, uh, it would be far more detailed than this. But as you can see, we've got 19 uh, words on the screen. We uh, we had four words that were typed on the keyboard. So this is an area that we can celebrate with that learner. Uh, we can also see we do have a predictive text tool, by the way. Um, so if we had used the predictor, it would have brought those uh, predictive text words up. But of course, we can also see um, in the activity, so whether it was a sentence set, a connect set, or a word bank, you know, how much of that activity did we use uh, within the lesson? So as you can see there, we've got uh, two types of activities. Um, hopefully my clicker's not just crashed there. Um, but we've got two different types of activities, and then we can see the support that we've offered. So looking at that, um, looking at that analytics there, uh, we can really see you know, if that learner needs more support, or if we need to reduce that support within the lesson um, and provide a different type of activity for them. I think my clicker's just crashed, by the way, so I'm just going to leave that on there for a minute. But coming back to you, um, Sean, so how important, in terms of this analytics tool, how important would this tool have been uh, when you taught your class um, in early years? Oh, it would have been like invaluable to be able to see at a glance what support had been used to create a piece of writing. It's just so useful. Previously, I would have been writing on every individual child's piece of work or in their book, annotating if they'd used a word bank or a sound mat or had to ask an adult for help. I think it's just a really great time saver for teachers and also great for tracking progress. You know, you can take it as evidence to things like pupil progress meetings as well, which is so helpful. Yeah. So, you know, what we've looked at today, we've we've looked at, you know, very specific um, example of a lesson uh, teaching Jack and the Beanstalk. Of course, you know, with Clicker, we can support from early years that we've looked at today and we can support all the way up. Uh, all, you know, we can support all the way up uh, to uh, year six as well. Um, and uh, as I mentioned at the start, Clicker can also run on Windows, Mac, iPad and Chromebook. Um, so you can access Clicker on a variety of different devices. Now, uh, you know, we've gone through probably 80% of Clicker, but um, after this meeting, uh, once we've uh, closed the meeting down, uh, um, uh, a survey will pop up and I'd uh, highly encourage if you haven't got Clicker in school and you want to learn more, uh, to book in a demonstration with one of the education consultants uh, for your area. Uh, we'd be more than happy to sit down for 15, 20 minutes, talk specifically about the, the needs and the challenges and the priorities of your school at the moment and how Clicker can fit in uh, to your classes. Because, of course, like I said, we've gone through a very, very specific example. So, um, so, yeah, just want to thank everyone for your time today. Uh, and apologies for that very final section of analytics for freezing there. I don't know what happened. But luckily, we got through everything before that happened. Uh, but I just want to thank everyone for joining today. Uh, like I said, um, feel free to fill in the um, the survey out, requesting a demonstration if you want to learn more. Um, and the recording will be sent to everyone within the next couple of days. So download it and share it with your colleagues. But thank you very much, everyone. And I hope you have a great rest of your day. Thank you.